ago, we thought we had it pretty much figured out. The rules that govern how planets orbit the sun. How a ball arcs through the sky. How ripples move across the surface of a pond. These laws were all spelled out in a series of equations called classical mechanics. And they allowed us to predict the behavior of things with certainty. It all seemed to be making perfect sense. Until about a hundred years ago, when scientists were struggling to explain some unusual properties of light. In particular, the kind of light that glowed from gases when they were heated in a glass tube. When scientists observed this light through a prism, they saw something they'd never expected. If you heated up some gas and looked at it through a prism, it formed lines. Not the continuous spectrum that you see projected by a piece of cut glass on your table, but very distinct lines. It wouldn't give out a smear, kind of complete rainbow of light. It would give out a sort of pencil beams of light at very specific colors. And it was something of a mystery how to understand what was going on. An explanation for the mysterious lines of color would come from a band of radical scientists who at the beginning of the 20th century were grappling with the fundamental nature of the physical world. And some of the most startling insights came from the mind of Niels Bohr, a physicist who loved to discuss new ideas over ping pong. Bohr was convinced that the solution to the mystery lay at the heart of matter in the structure of the atom. He thought that atoms resembled tiny solar systems with even tinier particles called electrons orbiting around a nucleus, much the way the planets orbit around the sun. But Bohr proposed that unlike the solar system, electrons could not move in just any orbit. Instead, only certain orbits were allowed. And he had a, a really surprising and completely counter physical idea, which was that there were definite states fixed orbits that these electrons could have, and only those orbits. Bohr said that when an atom was heated, its electrons would become agitated and leaped from one fixed orbit to another. Each downward leap would emit energy in the form of light in very specific wavelengths, and that's why atoms produce very specific colors. This is where we get the phrase quantum leap. If it weren't for the quantum leap, you would have this smear of color coming out from an atom as it got excited or de-excited. But that's not what we see in the laboratory. You see very sharp reds and very sharp greens. It's the quantum leap that's the origin and the author of that sharp color. What made the quantum leap so surprising is that the electron goes directly from here to there, seemingly without moving through the space in between. It was as if Mars suddenly popped from its own orbit out to Jupiter. Bohr argued that the quantum leap arises from a fundamental and fundamentally weird property of electrons and atoms, that their energy comes in discrete chunks that cannot be subdivided, specific minimum quantities called quanta. And that's why there are only discrete, specific orbits that electrons can occupy. And electrons had to be here or there and simply nowhere in between. And that's, that's like nothing we experience in everyday life. Think of your daily life. When you eat food, you think your food is quantized? Do you think that you have to take a certain amount of minimum food? Food is not quantized. But the energy of electrons in an atom are quantized. That is very mysterious why that is. As mysterious as it might be for tiny particles in an atom to act this way, the evidence quickly mounted showing that Bohr was right. In more and more experiments, electrons followed a different set of rules than planets or ping pong balls. Bohr's discovery was a game changer. 
And with this new picture of the atom, Bohr and his colleagues found themselves on a collision course with the accepted laws of physics. The quantum leap was just the beginning. Soon Bohr's radical views would bring him head to head with one of the greatest physicists in history. Albert Einstein was not afraid of new ideas. But during the 1920s, the world of quantum mechanics began to veer in a direction Einstein did not want to go. A direction that sharply diverged from the absolute definitive predictions that were the hallmark of classical physics. If you asked Einstein or other physicists at the time what it was that dif distinguished physics from all kind of flaky speculation, they would have said it's th that we can predict things with certainty. And quantum mechanics seemed to pull the rug out from under that. One test in particular, which would come to be known as the double slit experiment, exposed quantum mysteries like no other. If you're looking for a description of reality based on certainty, your expectations would be shattered.